In this lesson, we'll go through two examples where we learn how to classify amino acids. The first question reads, indicate each of the following for the amino acid shown. Starting with A, let's name this, give the three letter abbreviation and one letter abbreviation. Before we start doing this, it's important to note that amino acids are classified in four general ways, although there are more ways to classify them. The four most popular is whether they are nonpolar, polar neutral, polar acidic, and polar basic. When they're nonpolar, they're basically hydrophobic, and the three other categories makes them hydrophilic, water friendly. Obviously, to name this, we need some sort of chart to help us identify this amino acid. Although we can tell right away just from the R group, this is the R group, it's the rest of the molecule technically, that's what makes the amino acids different from each other. It has a benzene ring and it's bonded to a methyl. It's also easy to identify the carboxylate part and the ammonium part right here. So let's take a look at our chart. As you can see, it stands out. This is easily identifiable as phenylalanine. Phenylalanine has the three letter short form of PHE and the one letter abbreviation of F. So let's write that down. Phenylalanine, PHE, and F. Is this polar or nonpolar? Whenever the R group of an amino acid is strictly an alkyl group or is aromatic, automatically you can assume that it's nonpolar. So that's the case here. This should be nonpolar. I mentioned earlier that nonpolar amino acids are hydrophobic. And when something's hydrophobic, then it's technically neutral. So we can assume that the R group for this amino acid is neutral. And finally, interaction with water as hydrophobic or hydrophilic. We already answered this, it should be hydrophobic. Let's do the same thing for the next amino acid. This time we have to identify the following, and you'll notice that the R group, the one that's attached to this alpha carbon, is right here. We have OH, hydroxyl. And we know from previous lessons that whenever you have a hydroxyl functional group, that adds to its hydrophilic properties. So be mindful of that. This right away we know should be hydrophilic. Taking a look at the chart again, as you can see from the chart that when you have CH2 bonded to OH as the R group, we're dealing with serine. So I'll write that down, serine, that's S-E-R, and the one letter abbreviation is S. Is this polar or nonpolar? The answer is polar, and that's because of this OH found right here. So this is polar, let's highlight that. And the last question, and I think this is the trickiest one, is it neutral, acidic, or basic? You're probably tempted to think that it's acidic because usually with hydroxyl groups attached to a compound, it makes it sort of acidic because you can lose that hydrogen. And that's what acids do, they lose their hydrogens. Except that's not the case here because of its overall structure. In fact, it would require a very strong base for this to happen that is, to become ionized. There are only a select few of amino acids found in this chart that are considered acidic. And take a look at their structure. Notice the difference here. Therefore, this is neither acidic or basic, but neutral. And there you have it. A quick lesson on how to classify amino acids.